Hello everybody and welcome. Today we're continuing the mission we started last week where we started colonizing Juna and getting some infrastructure out there to do Red Planet here in Kerbal Space Program. If you haven't seen it yet, I'm going to link that video in the description and up top in that little gizmo over there. Other than that, yes, we're doing another launch because we're not yet done with delivering our equipment. Uh, this is going to be, to be the last episode for the Duna part, but I plan to do more of these infrastructure in space type of videos. And what do we have here? Well, it looks kind of boxy, <laughs> but there's a very good reason for that. And also, speaking of looks, look at that. KSP with mods, the right mods that is, is really a sight to behold. But I am excited for what the guys do with Kitten Space Agency and the graphics that will come out of there. Uh, again, there are some videos about that on my channel. Make sure you check those out. I'll link those as well. And if that type of content interests you, make sure you are subscribed to this channel. All right, yes, we've got our encounter with Duna, and of course, then we're on our way there. The, the way that I filmed that was a little bit, uh, is a little bit out of sync with how it really happened. <laughs> so basically, while this vehicle was transferring to Duna, I did the entire uh, deliver that uh, Ike mining scanner uh, to that system here. But I thought for like a coherent narrative, I decided to split this up in both of those videos. Anyway, let's see how we can get to our station that's already in orbit around Duna. And this is going to be a close encounter. Very close. Oof. Again. Yeah, I decided to do it again because I was too far away. Anyway, and... <laughs> well, that's one way to create artificial gravity on that ring station. <laughs> but luckily I didn't have to do that maneuver again. I was able to catch, <laughs> catch it and yeah. The reason for um, parking here is that this little vehicle is going to stay up here and park. And that other boxy contraption that you can see in the bottom left corner is going to land on Juna. And as I said, there's a very good reason why it is shaped like it is. But first, of course, let's dock that crew shuttle over there. And then it's time to get down. And look on the right hand side of the screen. There's... <laughs> that was another near miss. I'm starting to think that it's the space station that's kind of living dangerously <laughs> and on the edge of reality. <laughs> anyway, all right. So since Duna does not have that much of an atmosphere, I mean, it does have an atmosphere, but it's not very thick. So I don't really have to concern myself too much with aerodynamics, but uh, still I have to take care of how I get this down to the ground. And yeah, this here was a bit too slopey, so I decided to move somewhere else because I really wanted it to have it on a more flat surface. There we go. All right. Here is our cozy little Duna Outpost habitat. Uh, why is it cozy? Well, you're going to see that later, so don't worry about that. Uh, in reality, if we think Red Planet, if we think Mars, of course the habitats there are going to have to have some serious radiation shielding because Mars does not have a magnetic field of any substance. And yes, there is a preview of coming attractions later in that video because we don't have any crew in those crew capsules yet and we need crew to pilot that rover. But before that, we need to get some networking done and I'm not talk uh, talking about the social stuff, I'm talking about real technical relays and that uh, establish communication. Because that base on the ground is so far autonomous and I was lucky that I was in relay range. And what I brought with me on that space station are four small relay satellites that are going to provide a circumduna relay network, so to speak. 
Anyway, as I said, Duna habitats, I mean Mars habitats, are probably going to be built underground for the radiation shielding necessity. And look at that. That's some additional eye candy to the one we saw earlier when we were back at Kerbin. And now it's gone. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, there is going to be probably, if we say we're going to colonize Mars or have a permanent base there. And yeah, this is my network. It's not really a, a, a great quadrant, uh, what's it called? Uh, square, of course. Uh, but yeah, it's going to suffice. And here I wanted to do the same at Ike, also with three or four relays, but yeah, I kind of messed up the construction and separating two of those relays results in the engine getting blasted. But luckily, even with just two of them, I had enough communications capability to finally get the mining scanner working. And here we have it, we get in that polar orbit that's required to uh, be able to scan a planet or moon. And here we have our ore that we can mine. So where is the highest concentration? Well, there is some in the equator, uh, but the mother load, so to speak, is down there near the South Pole. That's going to be a bit more tricky, but yeah, we don't shy away from a challenge, do we? Reminds me a little bit of the moon, because, I mean, our own moon here near Earth, because when we are going to establish a permanent base over there, it's going to be down near the South Pole, because we suspect to have a lot of water ice there, since there's some permanent, sh uh, permanent shadows due to some craters that are there. And what you've seen here was basically another near miss where I almost crashed into Ike's surface, but I managed to save that with some weird maneuvering. Yeah, that's the problem with the nuclear engines. They're very efficient, but they are not as thrusty, so to speak. They don't have a high thrust number, so that's why you have to have longer burns. And if you do an inclination change, and you have to burn for a long time. This can mess up your orbit a little bit. What we have here is now our mining rig and fuel shuttle. Well, one of the fuel shuttles actually. And we're really going to try to land there near the South Pole. This is going to be sort of the easy part, <laughs> believe it or not, because the hard part of landing there is going to come later. Keep that in mind. All right, we're setting down here in this beautiful landscape. If you're wondering what these red spikes are, those are courtesy of the Parallax mod by the great modder Lynx, who, well, he, he breathed in some new life into the surfaces of Kerbal Space Program's celestial bodies. And what we're doing here, of course, is starting our refinery. What we want to do is we want to fill up all those big five meter tanks on the bottom and we want to fill up the big 5 meter tank in the center of the attached shuttle on top. Reason being, even if the shuttle is detached and delivering the fuel, the other four tanks are able to catch enough fuel to have, it, have the shuttle filled up when it comes again. But now we finally get down to Duno with some Kerbals and have our... <laughs> sort of vacation. <laughs> it's not really a beachfront house, but there's a lot of sand down there. And we have some more eye candy. Look at that sunrise. Yes, this is, of course, all due to the Scatterer mod, which was done by Blackrack, of course. And Blackrack is now working on Kitten Space Agency to make the graphics there shine a lot more than they would if he wouldn't work there. Okay, what you can see here is I targeted the base on the surface and I'm trying to guesstimate where my lander is going to land. I mean, it should have enough fuel for propulsion, landing and return. Again! And yeah, I have to do that again because I yeah was way too far away. Now I'm a lot closer, but I'm also too fast. Again. And another attempt where I overshot a lot. This time I tried to rely more on aerodynamics to break. And it worked. I, I mean, I got down safely. 
But again, more than 10 kilometers away, that was just too much. Again. So here we are again. <laughs> and this time, after a lot of tries, I've stopped counting and I stopped showing them to you. I was finally able to touch down very close to the base and almost tipped over, but thanks to the abundantly placed RCS modules, we were able to land safely and get to a stable position. All right, time to transfer the crew over there to the outpost. It's a bit of a hike, but it's just 100 meters, so it should be fine. And that's also, I think it's a good safety margin if uh, that ascent vehicle needs to, well, ascend. Okay, let's check out the interiors. Well, not, not a lot to see there, but <laughs> we're going to check them out again. But who is going to check out that patio? Well, Hans Kerman! <laughs> There you go, since Werner von Kerman has fallen uh, out of the good graces of everyone, apparently. Uh, now we have Hans Kerman, who is going to sit here and enjoy the scenery together with his friend Jenlo Kerman, who is more of a walker, so she's going to walk around and take the scenery in that way. But in the meantime, we're going to test drive that rover. This thing basically is designed to carry up to four Kerbals, a full science experiment complement, including a scanning arm. And it also has some storage containers attached to the side to, well, bring some surface experiments to wherever that rover might want to rove. And that's what we're going to try out now. But... Well, some things don't work out as I planned, because when I wanted to, this Kerbal here in the back to leave, the scanning arm broke and she got kind of stuck. I mean, I was able to unstuck her, but then when I switched to the remaining Kerbal who was inside, KSP started being <laughs> KSP. Yeah, the Kraken is alive and well after all of these years. So even though the rover in general is still okay and I brought some repair cards, still again, I decided to reload a quick save and this time I was able to safely exit the rover. I mean, it's not really exiting, it's more like dejecting, but what do I know what the social norm for Kerbals is to leave a wheeled vehicle? But what we are going to do now is set up a science station over here. I brought like, I think, three or four full sets of power generators, science experiments, controller, science experiments, etc. And yeah, hammer on that nuclear generator. That's going to make it more efficient, right? Kerbal engineering. Gotta love it. Okay. And after we set up all of that, it is going to be time to return to our little hideout, our little holiday home on a planet far away, with Hans Kerman still sitting on the terrace and enjoying the view while the rover returns. He's probably waving to them, but you can't see it because the garage door is in the way. Okay, before I get that in there and risk Kerbals jumping through the roof and destroying everything, I decided to um, autonomously drive the rover in there because it also has a probe core. And with this, we finally close sort of the narrative circle to the infrastructure part of things. Because as you can see here, I detached the fuel delivery vehicle from the mining rig and we're going to deliver the fuel first to that Ike uh, Orbital Fuel Depot. Basically, the six five meter tanks back in the background are just there to store the fuel while the other shuttle with the nuclear engines ferries it back to the Duna way station. And that's what we're going, actually going to do now. So we transferred fuel, we're going to detach here, and then we're going to ship all of that back to Duna orbit. If you're wondering about the weird attached Mark III uh, fuel tanks, those were actually designed to have like, because I used the that shuttle basically as the main propulsion for the entire sort of a resource 
spaceship train, if you want to call it that. And I added those fuel tanks as a reserve, so I would have enough to um, deliver all of those things to Duna and Ike. And then later get uh, back to Ike and ferry the fuel. But I overcalculated, and there is way too much of those uh, fuel containers down there. I ditched some during those maneuvers, uh, but I don't think you're going to see that. It's just a container floating away. Yeah, you can see on the top left corner, this is now the shuttle without the extra fuel tanks. It is now safely back at Ike, and our fuel ferry is going to ferry back down. And here, here is what I alluded to earlier with the tricky part of the landing. Yeah. I think this would be a case for KOS, that uh, scripting mod where you could uh, tell it how to land somewhere and that's probably going to be a lot easier once you figure out how to script that uh, than to do it how I did it, namely manually. So I kind of lost my nerves and decided, okay, let's set this down, do another quick save and then do it with a lot more patience and also with the control node reverted and the docking node alignment indicator mod active. And that made things a little bit easier. But the hardest thing was like, uh, like riding the throttle to have it around a 1.0 thrust to weight ratio to not get too high or too low. And here we are. We are now back in business. So what's up next? Well... There is going to be a few videos of this series more. I don't know when I'm going to do them, but I definitely plan on expanding my infrastructure setup to Joule and also to Elu and basically every planet and moon in this solar system until everything is connected, until we have basically some sort of infrastructure network in our solar system. Speaking of equipment, if you're interested what type of gear I use to record these videos to record my voice or uh, also what type of PC parts I use, I put some affiliate links in the description. You can check those out if you like. And if you really want to support what I do here on YouTube, you can either join to become a YouTube member or head on over to Patreon and sign up there for a small monthly fee, sort of as a tip jar for one of your favorite creators. If you ch choose one of the higher tiers on either, your name will show up here, like all of these wonderful people. Thank you so much for your support. Oh yeah, and on Patreon every video is ad-free, so yeah, that's maybe an added bonus. And also if you just want to see one video ad-free, you can go there and there's an option to pay just for one separate video so you don't have to do a monthly fee or whatever. Anyway, I'm really bad at selling things. I don't want to sell things. I want to do fun videos and yeah, be able to kind of finance this fun thing for you and enjoy this. Speaking of enjoyment, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you had a great time with me here in Kerbal Space Program. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.